General Dwight D. Eisenhower and his deputy commanders chart the liberation of a lost continent, plan when and where the mighty armies of the United Nations will strike. Today, northern France is that battleground. Under the building of their defense system, the so-called West Wall, the Nazis poured the slave labor of conquered nations. Pictures made by the Germans themselves to impress their satellites with the strength and invincibility of their fortifications. And on the fifth day of June, 1944, just as you see them here, a fleet of more than 4,000 ships put out from England. This was D-Day, fourth anniversary of the Battle of Dunkirk, and the Allied armies were striking back. fleet was underway. June 6th, this was the battleground. Fierce fighting around Cannes. Vast squadrons of bombers and transports led the way. More than 11,000 planes spearheading the attack. Paratroopers landed in Normandy behind the coastal defenses. Landings made with timing and precision, perfected only through scores of rehearsals like this. Barges approach shore ready for instant action. Some bearing artillery and rocket guns already opening fire. Just as in these scenes, the armies of the United Nations have made their first landings on the soil of Western Europe. Another of the great decisive battles of world history has been joined. This is the day for which free people long have waited. This is D-Day.
this week's game is D-Day. came out in 1961, uh, designed by Charles S. Roberts and published by Avalon Hill Games. Uh, one of their earlier wargaming efforts, and it uh, shares rules with a lot of war games of this time. This game has come out in a number of versions over the years, being reprinted with uh, new rules in the 1970s and even up until the 1990s. Uh, the rules that I'm going to be using today are heavily modified from the 1965 version. I find that uh, the, if you're using the rules as written, the Germans will have a pretty hard time of doing pretty much anything. So I've changed things around a little bit, made a few things a little more simpler and a little more um, intuitive, in my opinion. Obviously, if you don't think these rules help the game, and you like the original rules, then definitely stay with those. But uh, this is just going to be kind of how I've been playing the game. So the two, two units here, the blue are the Allied units, and the red are the German units. And if you look at each one, the important uh, points here are the three numbers on the bottom. We have on the left the attack factor, in the middle the defense factor, and then over on the right the movement factor. It also has a period of the size of the units and where it's located. Several different types of units. Um, there's headquarter units here, which have riding inside the rectangle. These static infantry units, these are a low-level unit that use zones of control to block the movement of uh, allied um, infantry and cavalry. We have infantry units with the X in it. The uh, armored infantry has an X and an oval. Uh, parachutes have the little parachute symbol below. And then finally, the armored units, which have the oval in it. The attack factor is your basic fighting strength, and your defense factor is your basic uh, defending strength. They do differ for some units. Uh, some units have a higher defending strength than they do an attacking strength. And the movement is the maximum number of squares a unit may move in one turn. Uh, terrain is pretty easy in this one. Um, the mountains around here are the rough terrain. Basically indicate that the unit can move until it reaches one of those, and then it can only move one hex per turn in these areas. Other than that, everything else is counted as clear, except obviously the ocean units, or ocean uh, hexes couple other things on the board. Uh, you can see these little um, fortresses here that have the red around the hex. Those are um, allow a unit that's defending from one of those to triple its defense factor while it's being attacked in the fortress. It does not affect its attack factor. It also, the unit in the fortress does not exert a zone of control, so other units can, enemy units can move past this without having to stop. The mountain hexes also allow the um, defending unit to double their defense factor and also don't affect zones of control. Finally, the rivers, and this is something I've changed a little bit, is that if you are attacking across a river, the defending unit doubles its defense. And um, if you if there's an empty space that's on the side of the river as the defender and you move into that, during that first movement phase, the defending unit continues to keep a double defense. However, in any subsequent attack after that, the uh, defending units defends normally. Headquarter units, I don't, in the game they really don't have a lot to do. What I've done is use them as supply units, and when I talk about supply I'll show you that. Uh, parachute units, parachute units are kind of interesting in that you can deploy them on the board and um, they can be deployed anywhere within five squares of their closest allied combat unit. So in other words, you can take a parachute unit and drop it behind a enemy unit, and therefore if the uh, enemy unit has to, uh, d has to retreat during combat, this can eliminate that enemy unit. And we'll go over that a little bit when we talk about the uh, combat results table. Also, these cannot be 
uh, dropped into sea or mountain areas. So how do we set the game up? Okay, so first you can you have to place all your static units on the coastal squares, and then up here where these red uh, stars are is where the uh, reinforcement units are, and this includes the 9th SS Panzer, the 49th and 51st SS Panzer Brigades, the 3rd, the 15th, and the 25th SS Panzer Grenadier Divisions, and the 106th Panzer Brigade. And you can place this on any of the stars. Um, also, you can stack these units if you wish. The stacking allowances are that, uh, that you can stack three axis units on top of each other in a hex, and you can stack two allied units together on a hex. And these units can operate either separately or in attacking or together. And they definitely they all de do defend together though. So no units can be placed in Switzerland, Spain, on the C squares, or on the X marked mountain squares. Those are uh, unavailable. Then after the uh, German unit has set up, then the Allied unit then decides where which invasion area they're going to use, and they do one of these. Now I play it as a solitaire game, and to make it interesting, what I do is I roll for the Allied uh, invasion area after the Germans have set up. And so what I do here is I roll 2d6, and if I get a 2 to 4, I put it in South France. If I get a 5 to 6, the Allies will invade in Normandy. If I get a 7, they'll in, they will invade in Calais. In An 8 is uh, an invasion in La Havre. A 9 and 10 is an invasion in Brittany, and an 11 and 12 is an invasion in the Bay of Biscay. So play is normally just the standard I go, you go, move and attack um, kind of turn. And the allies will go first, and then the Axis player will go second, and then that will be it for the turn. You resolve all battles one at a time. You can move some, none, or all of your units that you want. And if you move into an enemy zone of control, remember zones of control are these six Xs around, a, uh, around an enemy unit, you have to stop and fight that unit. During a movement, if you are in an enemy zone of control, you are free to move out of that enemy zone of control, but you can't move into another enemy zone of control, so you can't do this. And if you cannot move into a non-zone of control space, then that unit is eliminated. So if you're driven back because of a combat result, and there's a situation like this, you're eliminated. When we're invading onto a, from a C square onto the uh, continent, allied units that are moved from the C square to a vacant coastal square may attack all German units whose zones of control they're in. Uh, they can also attack directly from a C square to a land square, and they resolve this as a single battle. And they have to move into that C square if it's uh, if it's vacated. So they can't just sit here and float around out into in the ocean. Okay, so let's show an attack here. Um, we did, to do an attack, just a simple attack. We total up the uh, attack strength of the attacking units. So we've got all these here, and then we total up the defense factor of the all the defending units. We roll in the combat results table and we apply that result. Combat results table is pretty normal for this game. It has a defender eliminated. It has a defender retreat. And remember, retreats into enemy zones of control mean an elimination. It has the exchange where the defender loses all of their units and then the attacker has to lose the same number of units. If the attacker has more than that number of the defender's units, then they have to go to a higher one. So, in other words, if a defender has to lose six units and the smallest uh, unit factor that a uh, attack factor that a attacker has is seven, they're going to have to lose those seven. The attacker can retreat over friendly units. 
However, it has to land on an empty space if it can if it goes back, say, these two hexes and there's no empty space for it, then it's eliminated, even though these are friendly units. How do we invade? So invasion is pretty simple here. When the uh, allies determine where they're going to go, they look on this little chart here. So let's say we're going through the North Sea. They look on this little chart and they see on the first turn they can place six infantry units. This is not attack points, this is units. And they can place three parachutes. So what you're going to do is you're going to place these here, these here, and these here. And then they can place these parachute units. Now these parachute units could drop behind the Germans. So remember what they can do here. On the second turn they can drop two armor units, they can drop four infantry units, and they can drop one parachute unit. And this is through the North Sea. And there'll be specific things like you can't make an amphibious assault against Amsterdam, Rotterdam, or Antwerp directly. So you have to move through these uh, coastal hexes first. On the third turn, you get nine divisions, and that's when you can start to bring in headquarters. Now, what I've done a little differently is I consider the headquarters as supply units. And in order to move or attack, the allied player has to be within 12 hexes of a supply unit. And I waive the supply unit rule during the first turn, but they have to land a supply unit on the second turn. And I just use these headquarter units. The number of supplies that the number of units that can be supplied is on these little red numbers here. So what we can do is if we put a supply unit say here next to Amsterdam, that unit can now supply two um, active units in the field that are within 12 hexes. If they make if they decide to go further than 12 hexes, I put a second unit supply unit I move that say here, and now this extends the range another 12 hexes and around this guy. And I can actually make uh, branches of supply the whole way. So, and I don't count supply units as part of the amphibious um, invasion force. So if you wanna drop a bunch of supply units in here, you can. Now, if we were doing this North Sea invasion, we would have to get Antwerp pretty early on to get that 23 supply units that we can see there. Now, if, any, if a unit is out of supplied, again, it cannot move and it cannot attack. The only thing it can do is defend. So the Germans can actually go through and try to destroy supply lines if they, if they can, which is pretty hard this, in the game, but it's doable. So if a unit is either destroyed or knocked back, the attacking unit has the um, option of moving into that first space. They don't have to take it, but uh, they can. Replacements. Um, after the ninth week, the allied player receives um, two attack factors per turn of replacements. And these come from the dead pile or the one of units that have been removed. And they, since there's some of these attack factors are fairly high for these units, you can actually uh, build this up over several turns. The Germans have to wait to the 16th week to do this. And so usually they can do this with the, anything but headquarters and static units. And I kind of give them a break on that. I let them bring the static units back in. On the 16th, the 24th, and the 32nd weeks, there will be waves of invasions. And uh, I generally set these up on any beachhead that's closest to the action. Of the, uh, the sea movement rules, I generally don't find that they add a lot to the game, so I've never played with those. Um, again, you can do this on your own if you want. I've talked about supply a little bit and how to use it, and I'll kind of show you in the game. I've also ignored the strategic air power rules of the original game. Reason being is the Allies have such an edge in this that uh, they can pretty much wipe the Germans out easily enough without having to use the uh, strategic air powers. Okay, we've got D-Day set up here um, on Vassal. I've got my little combat results table down here in the lower right. 
uh, set the map up and then I've got the uh, what I'm going to be rolling right up here on the top so this should give us everything we need um, I've arranged my German pieces I've got my uh, Panzer divisions up here as my reserve I've set these uh, units here up as a defensive uh, factor and these uh, pink squares are also fortification squares so these guys get triple so this guy defends at 12 he defends at 12 he defends at 12 I've set up all of these uh, seaside units here you can see the ones without anything in the uh, in the rectangle and I've distributed them all over the place I've put some units here these uh, little uh, headquarters units I'm going to use to slow down any advance and they're going to use rivers to help defend them I've set some stronger units up kind of between areas so that I can kind of try to cover two beachheads and we'll quickly know where to take everybody and then I've distributed them clear down here to the Bay of Biscay even although this kind of peters out a little bit here and then I've got a few units here along the Mediterranean in case there's a uh, Mediterranean beachhead I can uh, defend there and slow them down a little bit I'm not gonna be able to stop them but I'm gonna slow them down as a German the I've got two uh, tactics that I'm going to try here initially if I can stop them at the beach and uh, then I will do that and if I can completely control the beachhead I'm gonna assume the Germans are push the allies back if that doesn't work in a few rounds I'm gonna move everybody back along the Rhine here and form a defensive line and hopefully that will will stop the allies from moving on into the low countries okay let's find out where the allies are gonna go and uh, I've got a little cheat sheet here so we're gonna say two to four is South France five to six is Normandy Calais is seven La Havre is eight Brittany's ninth ten and the Bay of Biscay is eleven to twelve on a two die six so let's roll two die six and see what we get we get a two and a six so we have an eight so checking my little cheat sheet that I made eight is La Havre so not a big surprise now so La Havre there's direct amphibious assault against Rouen is not possible now Rouen has set can hold seven supplies but that's not going to be a big issue these first uh, few turns the hard thing is I've only got three beachhead hexes here to move through so I'm gonna have to punch really hard um, La Havre has six infantry and three parachutes that I can pull in so I'm gonna go over here and pull six infantry it doesn't really matter which ones but two three four five six the other issue I'm going to have is that I'm not going to be able to have enough spaces to stack these guys so I'm gonna to to save some back let's see with three parachutes I will keep the parachutes I think those are going to be useful for eliminating units and I get three so those guys are going to be crucial so we're gonna to have to go four four and four and then a parachute unit, a parachute unit, and a parachute unit. And then these guys we will hold in reserve. Okay, so I'm going to drop my parachute unit here. I'm going to drop this parachute unit here. Hmm, this is kind of tough. I'm going to drop him here, and then hopefully, whoop. Well, we can retreat these guys okay that's gonna be the first uh, first movement of the allies so he's got four so he's got two to one odds here let's roll it let's pull this up ah. two to one odds let's not hope for exchanges okay two to one with a four one two three four attacker back two so the attacker stays put and then we're gonna have one to one odds here actually 
it's four to seven. So yeah, it's still one to one odds. Four to seven and this one to one at six is an attacker eliminated. So he goes to replacement and then he's gonna go to replacement. Okay, he's got six, he's got four, five, six, seven. So one to one odds there. Four, one to one, one, two, three, four, attacker back two. So, uh-oh, this guy cannot retreat anywhere. So he is eliminated. Okay, that is turn one. This Germans might stand a chance here. Or that's not turn one. I'm sorry, the Germans get a move. And they're going to reinforce like crazy. So we're going to reinforce here with the six. Okay, one, two, three, four. He can move. These guys can move through friendlies. Um, and... Okay, these guys are, this, this parachute unit's in trouble here. I'm going to go ahead. He can't really move anywhere else, but. I'm going to move him in there. Um, okay, we're going to start to move everybody here. Now, one thing I didn't mention when I was talking about the rules is on the 16th week, the uh, allies can have another beachhead established. And so if they make it that long, we will establish a second beachhead. A lot of times they're either eliminated by that time or they are uh, have got the Germans completely beat. And like I say, I am not a great tactician. So... I apologize, you're not seeing the best uh, usage of this game. I'm gonna get rid of those move markers. So we've moved everybody from here on over. Let's, uh, I think this game's okay. I don't think it's a brilliant game. It's got some problems. Um, it's pretty easy for the Allies to just make a turkey shoot of the Germans if the Germans aren't able to get everything established pretty quickly. Uh, we don't have to worry about the Mediterranean anymore. Oh, I can stack. I always forget that I can stack in this game. Which creates... I really cheat myself. Okay, and we are going to keep these guys. Okay, moving into mountains, but that's going to be fine. We're going to just stop when we get to the mountains. Yeah, this doesn't align with text on this vassal, but... I still think a lot of these old games are kind of interesting. And I've never been bit one big for card mechanics. Oddly, I don't know why, but I still like pretty much just dice for a resolution mechanic. Uh, if you feel differently, point out down below why, and I'd be just interested in discussing that a little bit or even making a video about the differences. So, okay, I think I've got everybody moved how I like them moved. A um, little concerned that these guys have a place to retreat to, but I think this will work. So I think we're ready to, let's get rid of the moved. I think we're ready to uh, resolve combat here. We can't do anything. We can't actually do anything against these guys, but they're kind of stuck. I guess Lahav is not the best place to bring a unit in. 
again, they're pretty constricted. They would have a little more room if they were down here in Normandy or up at Calais. I've played this before where they've come across the Mediterranean, which is an interesting game or the Bay of Biscay, but the Allies have a long ways to go. And I think when I had the Bay of Biscay, the Allies actually got beaten by the Germans. Okay, so we've got, we're going to give everything we can. So we've got three, seven, eight, and then eight is 16 to three. So that's going to be five to one odds. We rolled a two. It's hard to see up here. That turn marker out of the way. We rolled a two.
this is a bizarre game. So every time I've played this game, it's come out just a little different, which is kind of interesting. Two, three, four. Okay. Armor divisions are gone. We've burnt all of those. Eight. And eight is 16 to 12. One to one odds. One, finally. That's a, that's a defender eliminated. I'm going to let these guys move into position, and hopefully they can hold that position. And I think we finally got a breakout. Um, okay, German move.
got a four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One to four odds. Five. Placements, and then we've got a five. And four is nine. And eight is 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 to nine. Two to one odds. Four, two to one. Back or back two. Okay. The Germans are going to take advantage of this situation and they're going to try to burn that unit here. Okay, so we're going to go for a full German offensive here. And it is a trap has been set. So, um, five and four to one. That's going to leave that. And then. That's eight, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One to one odds there. One to one odds. Where's our? We've lost our dice. Three. One to one. Three. Defender back two. Okay. But we've got to see who's in range. Then we're going to do these guys, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, to nine. So two to one odds. Two to one, two, exchange, okay. Nine. Placements and replacements. Replacements, that's five. Oops, let's go back, hold on. Six, two, four, one to one odds, six. Okay, who is left? Um, 12 spaces, one, two, three, six, seven, eight, 12. So everybody's in range, I think. One, two, three, four, Okay, everybody's in range. Turn 20. Oh, there's a Kai there. We'll stay in there. Okay. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Nine to eleven. Okay. 
One to two, two. One to two, two, exchange. And then we have four, 12, 16 to nine. One to one, five. That's an attacker eliminated. And with that, I think that's pretty much game. Um, we have four units down here, five here, four. They really can't pick an effort attack. So I think I'm going to call it. I think that the allies have been pretty much just beaten piecemeal. So kind of interesting how that ended up. Um, again, the game seems to be either a runaway allied victory where they basically just uh, take the Germans down bit by bit, or if the Germans can uh, keep them on the beach for a few turns and then build up a defensive wall, the Allies are just going to beat their heads against it till they destroy themselves. Overall, I don't know, 6 out of 10 on this game. I don't think it's a fantastic game that I would probably bring out a lot. Uh, it's kind of interesting, though. Um, I think there's better games out there that cover this topic, but uh, I still kind of enjoyed it. It was kind of fun to play. So that's about it. Uh, if you haven't already, like and subscribe if you like this video. Let me know down below what you think. If you have any game suggestions, I'm open to hearing them and would look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thanks a lot. Bye.